Hi, I'm Chef Becky Yim. I'm here at Tucson Village Farm Angels Charity for Children Culinary Education Center. I'm here with... I'm Paola Gonzalez, and we work for the University of Arizona Cooperative Extension, and I work for the EFNA program, which is a program that teaches community nutrition throughout Pima County to youth and adults and a lot of other populations too. And today we're going to be teaching you a bunch of fabulous recipes, and we can't wait to get started. are here to make a traditional stew. So you may be wondering, what is the difference between a stew and a soup? Well, a stew is a much heartier soup in many ways. So um, with this stew, it's called a wakavaki, and we are gonna use um, some common ingredients you might have in your pantry, um, alongside with some ingredients that grow here in the Sonoran Desert. Um, so we're gonna complement those, uh, what you might have in your pantry with some of our fresh vegetables that we have in season. So to get started, we, I always start with my fresh vegetables and I'm gonna cut those and get those all in place. It's called mise en place. And then I'm gonna sweat those and add my canned vegetables to that. So that's kind of the general map that we're gonna follow. Along the way, I wanna teach you some tips and tricks about how to cut vegetables. I'm not sure where you're at with your skills, but you can always press fast forward times one times two and you can fly through this part if you already know it. So um, some tips and tricks though that you might not know that I've learned through my years of experience is an onion. So um, here's your stem end and here's your root end. I also call it North Pole, South Pole, Pole to Pole. So I like to trim off my ends. And when I do that, here's the tip. I leave my knife on the counter and I pull back and look, sometimes I get, sometimes it, that knife helps me start to peel it. Then I do the other end and I leave my knife down and voila, it helps me start to peel. Okay, then I'm gonna put my knife in. I'm gonna do a quick cut. I put my knife down on the side of my cutting board to be safe, get it out of the way, and I'm gonna peel it. So I have my onion peeled. I'm gonna put that there. I need a garlic clove. I'm gonna save that garlic skin as well. I'm dying to know where are you all are from. So at the end, we'll put our Instagram and Facebook link to FNEP. And I hope that you guys post your pictures when you guys make this, because it's really fascinating to see where you're all from. So, and what your, how your dishes turn out. Because as I said, as we go along um, a stew, you can put anything in. So we're gonna talk about the general principles of making a stew. Um, so it'll be fun to see what you guys come up with based on your areas and what's in season with where you're at. So again, we're in Arizona, the Sonoran Desert, um, and we are part of the University of Arizona. Um, and Paula is here, and she may tell you a little bit about FNEP and uh, the, their education, nutrition education program. That's right. We teach uh, education, well, nutrition education, as you mentioned, to a lot of people everywhere. But I do have a question for you, Becky. So there's sometimes in recipes, it asks for a clove of garlic. So mm. what's the difference between a clove and a head of garlic? Uh, or a bulb. Or a bulb, yes. Yeah head and a bulb. Yeah, they use those interchangeably. Yeah. So this is a bulb or a head. <laughs> I think because it looks kind of like a brain. Yeah. <laughs> right? So it kind of looks like a brain. All those different, different parts like your brain. And then here's a clove. Right. So, so it's like a little piece from the bulb. Yeah, so bulb it peels or off. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's a good question. And then like the skin is like your membrane in your, in your brain. So Anyways, yeah, great question. Thank so you. fun. Yeah, it's yeah, people get that confused. So yeah, I don't know if you'd want a whole bulb or head in your stew. But the more stew, but again, remember recipes are flexible and if you really like garlic, you could put a whole bulb in. So great. So I'm getting my ingredients prepared. I've taken the top and the tail off my zucchini as well. Um, so the recipe is gonna use some onion, about a quarter of an onion, one clove of garlic, two zucchinis. Um, about a half a head of cabbage. Now it's important to wash your vegetables. So um, I've already washed, scrubbed and washed my zucchini. The cabbage is a little different. I've done a pre-wash of my cabbage on the outside already, um, but I'm gonna also take the top leaves off and then I'm gonna run it under water one more time, okay? Because uh, cabbages, where do cabbages grow? Do you know, Paula? As I go wash this, I'm going to have you talk a little bit about the nutrition elements of cabbage as well as how they grow. Be right Perfect. Back. 
So I don't know if any of you have seen cabbage grow, but it actually grows really, really close to the ground, pretty much on the ground, right? So if it's on the ground, it's touching the soil and any other little critters that might be running around as it's growing, right? So it's really important for us to wash it. And the cabbage, along with a lot of other vegetables that we have here, have a lot of different nutrients, right? And it really varies on their color, but they all have one thing in common, which is fiber, right? So a lot of our fruits and veggies have fiber, which is good for our digestion, and it's good to make us feel full. And cabbage also has vitamin A and C, and it's really good. Um, vitamin A is good for our eyesight, correct? Mm -hmm. And vitamin C can help us heal our cuts and wounds, right? So you can kind of look up a lot of the different types of vitamins and minerals that are veggies have, but those are just some of them to keep in mind. Yeah, I make a salad with cabbage almost every day. Oh. So it's something that fills me up really well. And I just feel, and I like it because it stays really well all day, like, and it marinates well. Mm -hmm. So I eat a lot of cabbage. But. Yeah, so it doesn't get all like flocky and wilty, right? It right. tastes nice and I fresh. Just put my dressing right on top and I can just let it sit in the fridge all day and it gets better and better. So Ooh. I love my cabbage. I love your ideas, Chip. I can thank you. <laughs> So we're only going to use a half of the um, cabbage. So be careful. I would say this knife is a little small for my head of cabbage. So just be really careful and mindful when you're cutting. Okay, so I'm going to cut half that way. I'm going to spin it and cut the other half that way. I'm always going to tuck my knife into the side. I'm going to put this off to the my other half off to the side. Okay, so I have my vegetables all prepped um, and prepared. And I'm so I'm going to take my onion. I'm going to portion that as well. I think the recipe calls for a quarter of an onion, but I'm going to use a whole half. This is kind of a small onion to me. And so I'm going to use a half in this recipe. So I have my half a head of cabbage. I have my half a onion. I have my two ears of corn. If you don't have fresh corn, you can always use canned corn. It's just as fresh, sometimes more nutrient, nutrient rich because it's picked right at its peak and then canned right away. So sometimes that has more nutrients than the corn that could have sat, sat on the shelf for a while and been transported and my two zucchini. So I am going to start with my onion first. Okay, so here's how you cut an onion. You want to make sure your fingers are out of the way. I like to think about what my dish end dish is gonna be like. Um, so I'm gonna want some larger dice so I cut it going back towards the root end, but I'm not gonna go all the way through. So I did one cut going across and then I'm gonna cut this way as well. Um, and I'm not gonna go all the way through again. So I have about a thumb nail width. And then I'm gonna do the same thing going across this way. Oops, I'm gonna get to that back end. I'm gonna cut again, cut, spin, cut, take that root put it with my um, compost and then put it over there. I'm gonna go get a quick mise en place cup. I'll be right back. Chef Becky, yeah. I noticed something really cool about the way you hold your knife. Mm -hmm. Can you show us again how you hold it? Yeah, so I like, I always hold it. I teach people to hold it with between their um, thumb and their forefinger, like you're holding a pencil. Oh, okay. And I will say choke up on your knife too, because you wouldn't want to hold your pencil like this. You would have no control. So I often see people like holding it here and I'll tell them to choke up. So just like you would write with a pencil and mm -hmm. then you wrap your other three fingers lightly around the bolster of your knife and that's the bolster. And then you use a rocking motion. So it's really simple. Sometimes I see people going like this, which is, I'm like, why? Why would you do that? So you don't want to, so you just, that's it's just a picture of holding a pencil. That's exactly what you want to do. And then a rocking motion. Perfect. So there's that. Mm -hmm. And then there's this hand, which is might be even more important. This is called the guiding hand. Mm -hmm. And so you want to strangely, maybe unintuitively, you want to put your um, knuckles up against the knife. Mm -hmm. And that way, you know where your knife is all the time. Right, so you won't cut your fingers off, right? We have to be very careful with our knives. We definitely don't want to cut anything off because, ouch, that would hurt. And also, we don't want to have that in our food, right? That would be kind of gross. So that's a good way to practice cutting safely. Thank you, Chef Becky. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Now I'm going to smash my garlic. 
Okay. So again, you see I, I have my knife super flat and I'm just gonna use my palm of my hand. My fingers are way far away. Okay, I smashed it and I'm just gonna roughly chop it. Okay. Spin it, roughly chop, okay. Use the back end and scoop it up and go ahead and put it with my onions. Okay. Now I'm gonna take my cabbage and I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about who's watching, okay? And how big your hands are. So I always kind of want, and you want to think about how big your knife is. So I always want to say you're the boss, okay? You're, if anything is too hard and you find yourself all twisted up, then your product is the boss of you. You're not the boss of your boss. You're not the boss of your product. So you're the boss. So you want to break your, I, and I also say you're, an engineer when you cut. So you wanna break it down into manageable pieces that work for you and your body and the equipment you have. So for this knife, this piece of cabbage is too big. So I, what I just did, sorry, is I took the core out. So to cut it in half to take the core out made sense because it was two cuts. But I'm gonna cut this in half, okay? And then I'm gonna spin it. And if that falls away, I'm gonna let it go. And then I'm gonna do that and see how this works. So, and I want it safe. So what I'm doing is I'm working towards getting a flat surface, okay? So it's still a little wobbly. So I'm gonna divide that in half and now I'm gonna come. So can you see the guiding hand there? Okay, so maybe you can see the guiding hand real well if I stand like this. Um, Okay. So it's super important that you have that flat surface because that's how you stay the boss of your product. I finished the cabbage and now we're gonna move on to the zucchini. So one of the things I think about when I cut is how to keep it the cleanest. So I'm gonna do the corn last because okay. it will um, probably make a mess. So for the zucchini, we're gonna cut it in half and we're gonna make an interesting shape. So we're kind of looking at the shape so it's interesting to our eye too. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna have half moons when we're done with our zucchini. Okay, so cool. one thing you might, you might want to try to cut it like this, right? Do you think that's what we want to do? Paola, do you want to do I it like that way? So. I do think we like to... the way you're laying them flat like that. Oh, that's not a good angle either. Yes, because it doesn't seem like they're moving a lot once you grab them. Right. Okay, so then I want to think about what else I'm cooking and I want them to cook at the same time. So I'm going to do about, what size would you say that is? A quarter Yeah, I was thinking a quarter inch, yeah. yeah. So one of the neat things about zucchini is it grows in the Sonoran Desert really well and it goes alongside with corn mm -hmm. and the corn stalks protect the zucchini and so it offers some shade. So they help you each know. other out. You they do, yeah. That's awesome. And I think another thing I just re remembered about zucchini is that you can also eat it raw, right? So <laughs> for this recipe, we're going to cook it with our stew. Um, but you can also have it raw. You can cut it up and even snack on it like this. Or maybe you have heard of zoodles, which are zucchini noodles. And hopefully we'll make another recipe like that later. But maybe we can look up some recipes to try at home too. Yeah. So aren't those pretty? 
They look so cute. They look like little half moons, right? They're so adorable. <laughs> and now super fun, funnel, funnily fun. We're going to make some cobets because we have fresh corn. So again, super care. You need to be careful because this is wobbly and there's no way to get around that. So I'm going to put my knife in and actually I realized I'm going to put it towards the butt end because I have more control here. Okay, and I'm going to spin it around a little bit to score it. And then my heel of my hand, I'm going to just break down. Okay, so score. Oh, well, we have prepped all of our fresh vegetables so I can get rid of my cutting board. I can clean my station and we can get cooking. So just give me one second. Um, so now we're going to actually get to cook our stew. So now we have our prep done. The last bit comes together really quickly. So uh, we're going to have a nice, I like a nice heavy bodied, heavy bottomed pan. Um, it helps prevent scorching on the bottom if you have one. Um, that would be the pot you would use. You want something with some higher edges because you're going to add some liquid to it. So this is called a sauce pot versus a saute pan. So you want some kind of pot to hold all that liquid in. And then you want to turn it on to medium heat, medium high heat. Um, you can get away with medium high because as soon as you add your vegetables in, it'll lower the temperature of your pan. So you want to, I always, oh, this is my tip. Um, Always, always, always heat your pan before you add your oil. You can make any pan nonstick that way. It's also much easier to clean if you happen to forget about it. So always, always, always heat your pan before you add your oil. Okay. So, and then I can tell how hot my pan is by how fast, how fast my oil spins around. So I need to let it go a little bit longer. Uh, as I said, we're going to start with our vegetables first, and then we are going to add our can what's from our pantry. So I always start with onions and garlic, and then as I'm organizing my, see I'm putting them in order so I can talk and, <laughs> and cook at the same time. <laughs> um, so I'm order so I'm organizing them in how they cook. So I'm going to start with my onions and garlic. So this is standard pr pr uh, standard principle in probably any region of cooking anywhere around the world. Let's start with your onions, garlic. Um, it's called mirepoix. Um, anyway, so we're going to start with our onions and garlic. My pan is probably hot. Look how fast that oil is moving around now. So, OK, here we go. Sizzle, sizzle, sizzle. We like that sound. Get all those last bits. I smell the olive oil blooming. It smells so good. So, Becky, how much are we going to cook our onions? Are we going to let them? get like really nice and brown and crispy or just a little bit soft? Um, I like to sweat them is what I call them. And so that reminds me, I like to add a little bit of salt to help bring out the water in them and it helps sweat them a little more evenly. Um, and by sweating, again, it just takes the water out and it cooks them so they're clear and oh, translucent. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when versus a, onion begin, like when you have a fresh onion, it's nice and white and opaque, right? So you can't see through it. But when you're cooking it, right, it gets nice and like a little bit more transparent, right? You can kind of see the light through it. Is that mm -hmm. what you're trying to do? Yeah, exactly. Cool. And then once it gets transparent, the then you to caramelize it, then you those liquids would all be gone, and then the sugars and the onions that would be left over would then start caramelizing. Oh, okay. So. But that's not what we're doing today. We're just letting them sweat like sweat. you mentioned. Sweat, yeah. Awesome. Get nice and warm. <laughs> so, okay. And then we're going to add our zucchini or summer squash. And I think I totally interrupted you, Paula, when I was talking about how they grow. What did, what, what about their nutrients? And how do they, and, and, and they grow on a vine, right? 
I believe they do. And they, I think you had mentioned that they grow with the corn as well. Mm-hmm. And in some cultures, they also grow it together with beans. And that's what we call the three sisters. Yeah. Because they help each other grow together very well. And so our zucchini also has vitamin A and C. And it has a lot of other different nutrients that really help us too. Yeah, they're so great. And they grow like wild. Like once they start, <laughs> once they start going, they go, right? We have so many here. Um, we find all sorts of uses for them. And I have even used the stems. I've even cut, I've even cooked with the stems. So I stuff them with cheese, like with cottage cheese or ricotta, and I make cannelloni. Hi, right, cool. So, okay, so our onions are sweated. I'm gonna add my zucchini now. I'm gonna sweat those as well. Um, sometimes I like to put a lid on it to help s- trap the steam, which is, I think I'm going to do. I'm going to add one, two things. I'm going to add a little bit more oil to coat them so they don't stick to the bottom. And I'm going to add my, I'm going to put my lid on. It's a pretty wide bottom pan or pot. Um, and so that steam will help cook them more evenly because I was getting some brown spots on the bottom. So we'll let that um, cover and cook a little bit. I have to be careful not to forget about it because although the lid will protect because that steam will protect the cooking. Um, it's also easy to forget about and then not sweat, but fun. So what else? So the next step will be to add our cabbage. We'll do the same thing. It'll sweat. It'll, that'll go really fast. Um, and then we will, I think we'll save the corn for last. We'll add our canned vegetables. So we have some carrots, some green beans. Um, and something that's really interesting. So you can always, you, for any of these, we can use canned vegetables or fresh. And Paola, what do you think is more is healthier? Do you think canned or fresh is healthier? What do you say as our nutrition expert? Let me take a closer look and let me think about this. I would say that sometimes the fresh might be healthier and then sometimes the canned, right? But I think they're both really, really good options especially when maybe it'll be a while since we cook something, right? Our canned vegetables can stay longer in our pantry so they don't go bad and they don't go off stinky and stuff. But I think I remember you mentioning something earlier. that You say that a lot of our canned veggies are harvested at their peak. Peak meaning, right, that they have a lot of nutrients and they're at the best quality. So they're both really good options. But what do you think, Chef Becky? Yeah, I think you're right. And not in our, you know, the fresh vegetables aren't always in season. And so sometimes they're more expensive. Mm-hmm. They're harder to find. We might not even be able to find them. And I, and corn is so good. And I have little kids and they, it's hard sometimes to get them to eat vegetables, but they will always eat corn, mm-hmm. right? And, you know, some weeks it's just hard to get them to eat vegetables, but, and I feel better when they're eating vegetables. So sometimes like putting corn in something, I know they get a vegetable for that day it's feels good so sometimes you know for a variety of reasons sometimes buying corn or frozen or canned or frozen works really well that's right so that's another option right so we have our fresh and our canned but frozen is another option for everyone out there oh look how that's smelling so good it's looking really good too Hmm. so you saw that steam come out right that was really cool um and so yeah our zucchini now is a little uh, it's steamed, it's getting a little translucent, just like our onions. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and add our cabbage now. That'll release some liquid as well. I think it's so cool to watch um, how much volume is in our cabbage now and how much there will be in a five minutes. So it really um, releases a lot of liquid, which will end up being in our stew. So we are using all the liquid in uh, our canned vegetables, uh, which will add to our stock or our broth. So that's part of what makes up a good stew and or soup, right? Is, so sometimes you spend a lot of time making a good stock, um, but we're utilizing all the nutrients that are in our vegetables and in our cans. Um, we're saving that and using it to supplement and uh, supplement our dish. Look at that. So I'm gonna layer, I'm gonna add a little bit more salt Again, that'll help wilt our cabbage. But you know what? I just realized I'm going to be a little careful with the salt because sometimes there's sodium in our canned vegetables. Um, And you can always add more, but you can't take it away. So uh, 
So I just remembered that. And I see that you also added a different type of spice on there. What did you add? Just added a little pepper. Ooh, a little pepper. Yum. Yeah. Thank you. So I always have salt and pepper on my counter and I don't even realize I'm adding it. Okay. So my cabbage is reduced in size. It's super, it's wilted, but it's not dead yet. <laughs> so that'll give us some time for it to cook with our, um, our vegetables and their broth. So I'm going to be careful. I've wiped, I've cleaned the can lids with a paper towel and I've opened them already. Um, I'm going to be careful. I tried to leave the lids on, but sometimes they came off um, because I can rinse the cans and recycle them. And I can recycle the lid as well if it's still attached, but I have to throw the lid away if it's not attached anymore. So um, I always try to uh, leave the lid on, but just be careful. Be careful, those lids are really sharp. Okay, so I added some garbanzo beans. I'm adding carrots. Um, I'm adding green beans. Okay, and then I have my spatula. I'm gonna get my um, roast beef in here. Again, you could use stew meat that you cooked separately. You could cook it in the pot in the stew. Um, you know, use what you have available. You can use beef, you could use lamb, you could use rabbit. Um, what other meats? You could use pork, you know, so whatever you have available. Um, yeah, so use what you have in the, in the, in the, in your cabinets. So stew again is a flexible recipe. Um, it tastes a little bit different, but depending on who makes it and what you have and what you feel like and what season it is and what you feel like. So I'm going to mix this all up. Oh, look at that. Doesn't that look good? So pretty. So many colors. Eating a rainbow is one way to make sure you're getting all the nutrients you need. So that's the way I remember it. And like I do the mental check. Did I get enough nutrients in my day? So did I eat a rainbow? Pretty easy nutrition 101 for me. So mix that corn in. Make sure it's covered with some vegetables so it can cook. That's the only thing that's not cooked right now. So I'm going to squish it down there. Make sure everything, so I'm pushing everything down and squishing it. Squish, squish, squish. Because now I'm going to cover it with water. So I kind of want an even layer. And I'm just going to make sure everything's covered with water. Water. We're not going to put too much water in there because we want, this is stew. So we want it rich and hearty. Um, this could go over rice or mashed potatoes. You can eat by itself. Um, but remember, we can always add more liquid, but we can't take it away. Um, so I'm going to add a little bit now. I'm going to put the lid on it. That'll help, again, generate the steam um, and help but not evaporate and help protect it from cooking. So um, stay tuned. Uh, and we'll have it cook for about 20 minutes, 30 minutes, and we'll come back and see what it looks like. Take care. So, let's check our soup out. Let's see. So remember about the steam. Let's, oh, that is so beautiful. Oh my goodness. Oh, let me show you guys. I have my, I have my ladle all ready to go. <laughs> um, here, let me show you guys. This is a heavy pot and hot. Look at that. Can you see it? It's so, so beautiful. I had some extra corn, so I put it in. So that's what you see. Because remember, you can add anything you want. So, oh, I can't wait. So I like to taste a little bit before I give it to my friends and family. So I have a little tasting spoon here. Just like taste the broth. That's perfect. Um, and then we're going to ladle it up. So when I ladle, I just like to make sure there's a little bit of everything in each bowl. So I like these clear bowls that we have because I can see and I think they show off all. Remember that rainbow? Eat the rainbow. They show off the whole rainbow. Isn't that 
gorgeous. I'm looking for some tongs. There, is it? I want to do is that. I think that's so pretty. And then, so voila, isn't that gorgeous? Thank you for joining us today. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the notification bell icon to see our upcoming videos. You can also follow us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash communitynutrition.uofa. And you can also find us on Twitter and Instagram at UA underscore FNEP. If you want to get in touch with us, you can email us at communitynutrition.uofa at gmail.com. See you later.